Hey YouTube, it's Paul Winner again. As you may have already seen my other videos about my rooted Samsung Vibrant, my rooted HTC HD2, Evo, G1, stuff like that. Well, usually how I have the products device the devices box out on display to describe which device I'm talking about, but I lost my Samsung Vibrant box. So, this will do suffice. But anyways, I installed Eugene 373's Vibrant 6 ROM with a lag fix. So let's go ahead and have a little run through with that. Alright, so here goes the standard TW launcher. Uh, when you first boot up, it'll give you a choice between TW launcher and launcher. TW launcher stands for Touch Wiz Launcher, which is Samsung's proprietary launcher. And launcher makes it look like the Nexus One. TW launcher, same Samsung interface, still swipe around. But with launcher, it makes it look like a little bit like the Nexus One. If you guys like that look, I think it's a little bit better, cleaner feel to it than the TW Launcher. And it has a little 3D effect still. As you can look up there and look down there. Scrolling is very smooth, as you can see. So it comes with uh, five. It comes with five home screens. And you might have noticed when I click the home button, it gives me a choice. Uh, Launcher Pro. Launcher Pro is a pretty good launcher in my opinion but it does have its little quirks here and there sometimes it does slow down the phone but I think it looks more it looks a little bit better than uh, the stock launcher because of these little shortcuts and the ability to uh, customize it with uh, going clicking the settings menu tab down there and going to preferences you can customize your home screen have like three to seven home screens you can change the little three you can add 3d effects to it just like the nexus one and stuff like that but this is not a review on launcher pro this is a lot of review on eugene 373's vibrant six so anyways as you might already see scrolling is very fast but you might already be thinking oh but your other videos already showed it running pretty fast but I have numerical data to back that up so I downloaded a application called um, Quadrant Standard uh, which is a pretty much like a benchmark for Android phones I already ran a benchmark let's just prove it to you again pretty much what this little benchmark does it just um, compares your phone which is a vibrant 6 I mean uh, Samsung Vibrant and I'm assuming you are using a Samsung Vibrant or plan on purchasing one in the near future pretty much it compares your phone to other higher end Android devices such as the Nexus One uh, Motorola Joy X uh, a whole bunch of other little things um, pretty much I've been able to get a score of 20 about on average about 2290 around that score whereas the Nexus One gets a benchmark score of mm, about 1250 and a stock Samsung Vibrant gets about uh, 850 and there you go the benchmark is done you can't I'm not sure if you can actually see that but my device is 2246 Nexus One is about mm, 1300 with 2.2 installed Motorola Droid X is about 1,100. Stock Samsung Galaxy S is about 8,900, which is a great improvement because it's about two and a half times more with the rooted ROM as well as the uh, lag fix. So there goes the numbers. You can go ahead and do it for yourself. It's called uh, the application is called Quadrant Standard it's on the marketplace it's accessible from there if you need proof for yourself go ahead and download it and test it yourself and I have had viewers ask if wireless tether does work uh, wireless tether for laptop does work however I couldn't connect my other vibrant with it for some reason I'm not sure why but I'll just show, go ahead and show you that it does work with laptops let's just click it to start and Paul laptop is already connected so let's just put this aside and I will connect 
and you will see Android Tether right here. Go ahead and connect to that, connecting to Android Tether. Click that, make sure it's connected. Yes, it's connected. Let's open a web browser. Yeah, it didn't have a really good connection right here. That's why. Let's reconnect it. Connect it to Android Tether. Let's see. Hmm. It says it's connected. Okay, let's see, maybe it's a little buggy on my Vibrant. Let's see. But, um, yeah, I did test it before, and it did work. I guess right now it's not working. My battery is a little low. Oh, there it goes. I just refreshed it. And there goes Mozilla. Let's go to Yahoo. Yep, Yahoo right there. And you're still connected to the Android Tether. Just to show you that I didn't do anything in the background. <laughs> uh, I'll just show you right here again. I'll go back to Google. And it's still booted up. And on the phone it'll tell you how much stuff you uh, uploaded, downloaded by the numbers right there. Let's just go ahead and stop that. And so Tether does work. Um, I guess it, it had a little kinky quirk there but anyways it does work and you do you definitely will notice it's a lot faster with the lag fix and um, let's see I downloaded a whole bunch of applications but there's one thing wrong with the lag fix and that is that it um, it kind of messes with your SD card your internal memory that is um, so I have a whole bunch of applications installed right now it's about a gig a gigs worth and I, I do believe that the Samsung Vibrant has about two gigs of storage um, but right now it's uh, it tell it tells you that the available space is 220 megabytes it's gonna keep it's gonna stay that way for quite a while until you get past that it's a little bug in it um, but it doesn't accurately tell you how many how much available space you have until you start going over that little limit but um, you do have it, it, it just uh, it just won't report it until you install over that and um, that's one, that's the only bug I have seen in the lag fix but other than that I do believe it's well worth the uh, inaccuracies of the storage eh, whatever and uh, let's see I haven't I have not tested uh, the navigation so let's go to Google Maps see if we can pinpoint me okay let's see my location it's telling me my it's waiting for location it's taking a while but um, overall I do believe this ROM is a definite definite improvement over the uh, vibrant 4 ROM and uh, let's see, not going to show my address, but let's see if it's correct. It's, uh, yeah, it really is correct, actually. It's telling me that um, it's uh, accurate to 90 meters, and it's pretty close to my location. Um, I mean, it won't, it won't be, it won't throw you off too much now, but, uh, I guess the GPS is somewhat fixed, but Samsung still needs to address that problem. So, 
let's see and that's about pretty much it well as far as rooting I haven't um, dug thoroughly into the root um, there is still a possibility of overclocking it I have not tested the overclock yet but um, stay tuned for my other videos I probably will be eventually um, install the overclocking uh, application it's called set CPU but I haven't installed the the kernel for the overclocking thing which allows it to overclock up to 1.7 gigahertz that's about a 20 percent increase and I've seen people report um, quadrant scores of about 2700 which is still a lot but yeah and that's a wrap up pretty much Samsung Vibrant rooted with Eugene 373's Vibrant 6 ROM with a lag fix.